Are there other ways besides microscopy to view and monitor cell behaviors in vitro? The short answer is yes, and it's called ESIS. In this short video, I'm going to give a brief explanation of what ESIS is and how it works. ESIS is a label-free method, meaning no fluorescent tags or dyes to measure multiple cell behaviors in vitro continuously in real time while the cells remain inside of the incubator. So what is ESIS? ESIS stands for Electric Cell Substrate Impedance Sensing and is a way to use electrical currents to electrically view and quantify cell behaviors in a culture dish as opposed to optically viewing them. ESIS works by using Ohm's law, which you might remember from physics class as volts equals the current multiplied by the impedance. In short, ESIS sends a fixed alternating current through electrodes located at the bottom of ESIS culture ware. As the current is being sent through the electrodes, the culture medium acts as a conduit for the electrical current to travel between the electrodes in the same well, thereby completing a circuit. As the cells grow and cover these electrodes, their fatty membranes act as insulators and impede the current, causing a voltage change, which is then measured by the instrument and in turn allows us to calculate the impedance caused by the cells. Now there are two pathways through cell layers that the alternating current can travel through that cause the impedance. The first is the resistive pathway, which has the current going around the periphery of the cell and through the cell-to-cell -cell junctions. The second is the capacitive pathway, which has the current capacitively passing through the cells themselves. Since ESIS uses an alternating current, we can take advantage of the speed of oscillation of the current in terms of its frequency. When we have low AC frequency, say less than 4000 Hz, the majority of the impedance is being caused by the current traveling the resistive pathway around the cells and experiencing impedance from the attachment and the cell-to-cell -cell junctions. This pathway makes low AC frequency very useful for measuring characteristics like barrier function tier or even attachment resistance. But if we increase the AC frequency up above 32,000 Hz, charges build up around the cell membranes, making it easier for the current to capacitively couple through the membranes, as opposed to going around the cell, hence the capacitive pathway causing the majority of the impedance. This makes high AC frequency useful for measuring cell coverage assays like proliferation rates or even cytotoxicity. ESIS software will report the results in graphical format of impedance versus time. When there are no cells covering the electrodes, the impedance will remain relatively flat. But when cells are seated and begin covering the electrode, the impedance will rise in what we call the growth phase until the impedance reaches a plateau. As previously mentioned, if we have low AC frequency, the majority of the current is moving through the resistive pathway and the impedance rise and plateau represent barrier formation to maturation. But if we're viewing the impedance at high AC frequency, then the rise and plateau and impedance represent cell growth to confluence of the cell monolayer. Then of course, if a treatment is added that is cytotoxic, the cells will either loosen their barriers or ball up and lift up off the electrode, causing a decrease in impedance that is linear with the percentage of cell coverage. By taking advantage of properties of alternating currents and the pathways in the cell layers that cause impedance, ESIS can measure a multitude of cell behaviors, including barrier function tier, as previously mentioned, attachment, proliferation rates, cytotoxicity for EC50 values, wound healing migration, electroporation transfection, micromotion, and even more. And with the ESIS Z Theta's capability of measuring multiple frequencies simultaneously, all of these behaviors can be measured in the same experiment, making ESIS one of the most efficient and effective techniques in quantifying cell biology. If you'd like to learn more about ESIS, please visit our website at www.biophysics.com or you can email us at info at Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.